Right. So, firstly, Denzel Bentley, British middleweight champion. Thank you very much for coming on to uh, to Slothbox, the YouTube channel. Um, so you, you were just having a little sleep. You're telling me uh, as Martin Bauer's been putting you through the ringer again. Yeah, I was having a little nap. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've been put five paces today. It went too hard today, but it was still, you know, enough to you know put me put me to sleep a little bit. But yeah, it's been all good. No, go right. Ever since I've known you, this is before you'd even turn professional. You always look like you're on weight or maybe a few pounds away from it. Have you always been just like had a high metabolism, or is it a case of you, you always lived a healthy life? Um, I always stay in the gym, so it's quite easy to you know stay fit and stay on stay on weight. Um, of course, if you go on holiday and stuff, you might come back a little bit heavier. But other than that, I'm just I'm just always in the gym, so I I think that's the reason why I'm never too far off my weight and. Of course, I don't. That I love food, but I'm not going to just eat like a mad person to get fat. Right? Yeah, <laughs> love it. Right, we're going to start from the beginning, pulling it back. So, at what age did you get into boxing, and why? Um, well, there's two ages here, which is weird, but I think the first age was 15. You know, my brother bought gloves from the market, and we used to just fight you know, each other and our friends on the estate and stuff. But I never actually got into a boxing club until I got into college. So I was about 17, 18 when I finally got into a boxing gym and was like, okay, so this is what's going on there. Let's let's see what this is about. So, yeah. But were there, was there anyone else apart from your brother? Uh, was there anyone else who boxed in your family? No. Nah, nobody. Well, to be honest, um, one of my uncles came out and told me that they used to box, but I didn't know that until I started boxing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, yeah, but... I, I didn't, yeah, I don't know. So, like I said before, I, I knew you when you were fighting amateur. So, uh, tell us about your amateur career and what happened there. Yeah, um, amateur career didn't last too long. Had 17 fights. Uh, but I got to the na the national, the quarterfinals for the nationals of the under 20 novices. Um, I didn't win any national titles, one of the Londons and area titles and all that stuff, but yeah, I didn't really do, you know, exceptionally well as an amateur, but I've done as well as I could. Oh, good. Well, you, uh, you obviously, you know, since you joined the pro game, you've uh, started to excel. But uh, quick question, any boxing idols growing up? Um, not really growing up as a child, but later, when I got into it, um, I, I used to watch Floyd Merver a lot. And Ward. Those are my two guys that I'd watch. I did watch Aiden Rona as well because that's who I first started watching. That's how like, I got into boxing. But um, the, the main two were uh, Floyd Merva and Andre Ward. And then obviously, as I started going into boxing, I started getting back in, obviously, learning about all the other greats. And I started to also, you know, like them too. Yeah, if, you, if you're going to choose two people to follow, I mean, two multi weight champions is uh, it's a pretty good starting block, isn't it? You know? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're currently 16 wins, one loss, one draw. And you got 13 knockouts. So you're uh, you were British champion. You lost it to Felix Cash. Then you regained it in a fantastic fight with uh, Linus Adolfia. J just how satisfying was it to be crowned two-time British middleweight champion? No, it was, it was it was very satisfying. You know, I, I I got to got to get you know my old title back and my position back. And when you thought it was all lost, then it's going to be a long road to get back. It, it was. You know, kind of long road, but I, I think I've regained the respect of everyone just by winning it back, then going another route and getting back to a certain position. So, you know, it's satisfying. I feel like, you know, like I I've done it the right way. No, definitely. Is is there any interest in a in a Felix Cash rematch? Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent down the line. I've said that um a lot of times. I just got to keep building myself back and getting into a position where um I deserve it. So well, what's next for, for Denzel Bentley? I mean, are you going to try maybe defend the British title, get the Lonsdale belt outright, or are you going to aim for the European Commonwealth? What, what, what's on the horizon? Um, there's lots of options, really. It's just what's available. We wanted to do the European, well, that's not available. Um, the, the, the current champion, well, not the current champion, the former champion now, had lost it. I think about a week ago and now they've been ordered to do for a rematch. So I can't just sit and wait around for that. Um, that's how the pitch. I'm at some point, if I can get my hands on that, I'll, I'll be 
I'll be happy. I mean, if I have to defend it, that's it. Then I'm not vacating it. I have it. So, but if there's other titles available that I can, you know, I can get on on the way, you know, get me ranked quite highly and all these rankings and stuff, then yeah, I'd, I'd happily take those titles too. Not that the British isn't better, but it's just, you know, why not get more belts? <laughs> no, absolutely. Now, I was reading the other day or watching the other day that Hamza Shiraz recently said he'd, he'd like to fight you. Um, you know, he's come from, from Super World, so he's now moved up to uh, to middleweight. He's a, he's a big lad. He's about six foot three. Um, at the moment, how would you see that fight panning out? I'll beat him. I'll beat him. If you ask me how I see it panning out, I'll beat him. But, um, yeah, it's a good fight, isn't it? It's a good fight. Um, you know, I've, I've heard his name a few times. But, you know, I've, I think I'll beat him comfortably as well. So you're trained by Martin Bowles, as we mentioned before. And so um, f- for the years gone, I used to see you training at the uh, at the old Peacock. And uh, yeah. for the people who know the old Peacock down in Canning Town, it's, it's no longer. Um, you know, it's it, a place that had been there for decades. It had a wealth of history to it. It had a distinctive smell as you walked in. There was two smells you got straight away. You had the smell of food that was being cooked on the right-hand side by, uh, you know, by the crew and, uh, and, and, and the readiness of a mug of tea or coffee. Um, and then you had the smell of sweat. It was it was a hard, hard, distinct vibe. Tell us about the new Peacock Gym, where it's at, who's training there. Um, the new Peacock Gym uh, is up in Epping. Uh, you don't get that smell of food no more, of course, because there's no calf, but that's fine. Um, it's at the moment, there's no one outside the camp that trains there, but a lot of people do come down to spa. So we still see faces from the old gym and stuff. Um, it's me, Chris Bork, Billy Allen, um, Louis Lynn, um, Tom, you know, Big Tom, yeah, um, Aaron Prosper. Wow, he just boxed the other week as well. And some have joined, some have fell off, but there's still quite a few boys, so it's always active, it's, it's always, it's always busy. And there's always a good atmosphere. We always like we get along with each other quite well. But then obviously you get the um uh Brian or Sean his mob, obviously the um Dan Aziz and uh Adrian Martins that come down every Friday for sparring and other guys that come down for sparring, you know, every other day as well. So it's, it's, it's still a good vibe down there. You mentioned about Chris Borg. So so tell us about the sort of triangle there, Chris Borg, Martin Bowers, yourself. Yeah, no, it's, it's good, man. Every, everyone that we're all in that kind of championship mind state, like we know we're like going to be in like title fights and championship fights. So, you know, everything we do, we're trying to push each other. So we're that like, we're that like, trying to, you know, push each other. I know Chris has just come from a loss, so it's like he's in he's in the um he's he's in the road where he's trying to come back. And 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 I think and I believe he will come back. He will do as long as like, as soon as his injuries heal up, he'll be back out. He'll be back out there, and he'll be you know getting things done, and he'll be trying to do and he'll be doing his thing. I just keep saying, look, look, look at me. Just the other day, I was in this position that like, it, it could coin can flip on his head, like as, as quick as that. So he stayed in the gym. He didn't take loads of time off and sulk about his loss, even though he was injured. He, he, he'd come in the gym. He had a hand injury, and, and he was working, even though he couldn't use the hand. So he still got a good, he still got a good head on his shoulders, and you know, he, right. he, he wants to get back as soon as possible. It's it's it's, it's yeah. um it's not good to have a loss of any sort, obviously. But in the same breath, he are in a position now advising other fighters with the wisdom of your experience that you've had in your own life. And um, a loss, you know, there's many fighters I've spoken to had a loss and it's been the best thing ever that's happened to them. I've, I've seen everyone from the Lennox Lewis's bounce back and becoming the best fighters ever, um, you know, sort of avenging the losses, but more than anything, proving to themselves that they can come back. So um, apart from Chris, is there, is there anyone else you've spoken to who you've kind of given that advice from your side to say, hey, you know, you've had a loss, but you can bounce back from this? Um, not, not really anyone that I've spoken to um, uh, deeply on level, but there's a few fighters that just took a loss recently and I just give them a message like, hey, listen, it's not the end of the world, man. It's just time to grind and get back now. That's it. Like, so there's a few fighters that lost recently that I've kind of just dropped a message and, 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 and said that too. But I haven't had a conversation with them apart from Chris, because obviously he's, he, he's in my gym. I'm with him every day. So I, I've been very lucky to... Uh to be ringside for uh, certainly the first, I think, 11 of your fights, which involved everything. Oh, it's yeah. random here. We're talking everything from the Albert Hall through to um, a hotel in Park Lane, um, yeah. charity night and, uh, and, and all sorts. Um, 
Talk to me about the Albert Hall because, I mean, that's uh, one hell of an atmosphere there. And uh, I think you were fighting on the Daniel Dubois undercard for that one. Yeah, I, I think that's my favourite venue that I've boxed in so far. Yeah, I love where Albert Hall is. It's, it's just great, man. That, where everything just goes up, round, and the circle, just like... Yeah, no, I like that venue. So I, I'd love to headline, headline there like, at some point. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's one of my goals, like, personally, like, just to headline up where Albert Hall. I think it's a great venue. I think it just gets so loud in there. It's, it's like a very, very, it's like a bigger version of your cool because everyone's so close, but it's, it's like it's enough to fit in a good amount of people in there. So I'd love to, to headline that one day. So to, Tony Bowers, uh, again, I've, I've known him for many years uh, through the old Peacock and the new one and uh, just, you know, as, as a mate. And um, he's he's got an incredibly calm way about him and, and he's got this... Uh, he must have some like super gene or something because for those people who know Martin or don't know him, I mean, he's you know he, he, he's older than me and I'm and I'm fifty and he looks like he's in his twenties. Um, he, you know, <laughs> he's like Benjamin Button or something. Um, and and he's got a great work work ethic as well. You know, he's always in incredible shape. But how good is it to be trained by Martin Bowers? What what sort of magic does he bring to the table? Uh, first of all, it's very hard because everything we do, he's more than likely done already that morning. So there's no complaining. <laughs> there's no complaining. He'll tell you, uh, get over it, mate. You know what I'm saying? He won't tell you he's done it, but we know he trains a lot. So I know he's... You ask him, what did you do this morning? He's getting around to everything he's done. But, um, yeah, no, it's good, man. It's good, you know, being trained by someone that's actually... Not to say that he boxed, like, or he hasn't boxed, but someone that, you know, puts himself through that kind of stress as well, training-wise. Like, he still does that to this day. And, and like you said, like, he's, he, he, he's not the, the, not the youngest trainer about but he trains he works um you know he gets on with it and he, it helps us it helps push us because he knows okay i know this is hard I might ease off that or oh, no nah, listen i know you lot can do this and listen being with him so long he knows what makes me tick he knows what makes us tick of course new boys come through the gym but it doesn't take long before he kind of gauges them and figures them out and goes all right cool i not what's with this guy and that guy so he pays attention to, to all of us he pays attention to detail he knows when you know we're feeling it or when we're not and it's it's good to be trained by someone that just pays attention. Do you know what I mean? It's just it's just it's just not on a on a like kind of hard man mentality all the time. Like oh, you got to dig deep. It's like listen, I know when it's time to dig deep. But I know when it's time to also step off the gas and have a little rest. Well, listen, yeah. Denzel Bentley, thank you very much for coming on the Softbox, and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Whether it be at the yeah. Albert Hall, whether it be at a hotel in uh, in Mayfair, whether it be at the O2, whether it be at Madison Square Gardens, um, you've made a great great, contri great contribution, shall I say, uh, to the sport of boxing, Britain in particular, and we look forward to seeing you um, adding more belts to your, uh, to your silver cabinet. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Take care, man. I'm going to end it here. Appreciate it. Awesome.